We are still in the dynamics chapter and we're talking today about the nonlinear forces. We talked last lecture about the linear forces, how to deal with these forces as being part of vectors. And nonlinear forces are vectors as well. Let's learn what are nonlinear forces and how we're going to analyze them and solve them within the problems that come in our Nonlinear forces is basically forces that are two or more being directed into a direction that has an angle. Those forces, as we mentioned before, are considered vectors. When you have a vector, that means it has, it has a magnitude and a direction. In this case, we will learn through examples. We have here a person A thinks that if A and B each pull a rope forming an angle of 20 degrees with the bow, the net force on the canoe will be greater than in the previous example we got in our last lecture. The canoe is being dragged along the beach using ropes that are parallel to the surface of the, be of the beach. Starting with a free body diagram, we need to calculate the net force on the canoe. Is person A's thinking correct? So we have person A pulling with a force that is taking an angle of 20 degrees from the x-axis and person B is pulling with a force that's acting as minus 20 degrees or 20 degrees relative to the x-axis as well. So you're given that force 1, 60 newtons along the rope, force 2, 60 newtons along the rope as well. The final force 85 newtons backward. The friction force is 85 newtons pulling backward relative to the rope. You have theta 1 equals theta 2, which is 20 degrees. Find the net force on the canoe, which is the F net. First thing we do, create a free body diagram for the forces. So we have the center of the object that we had, which is the canoe in this case. We had the friction force going backwards and we have FT1 with an angle of 20 degrees from X axis. We have FT2 with an angle of 20 degrees on the fourth quarter of the Cartesian or relative to the X axis in this case. So we drew the free body diagram in this case. Now let's list down the vectors, the X components and Y components to be able to solve the question systematically. Ft1 is 60 newton cosine 20. So you analyze this vector. Cosine theta will give you the x axis vector, and sine theta will give you the y axis vector. So the y component is 60 by sine 20. The F2, the x component is 60 by cosine 20. The y component is minus 60 multiplied by sine 20, because if you analyze this, it will have one vector going to the right one vector going downward, which is the y vector or the y component. Now from the chart, ft1 y equals minus ft2 y. F net in this case should be the x components and the y component. For the f net y equals ft1 y plus ft2 y. And the f net y would be ft1 y plus ft2y, which would be zero. We have zero here because ft1y equals the ft2y because you know the forces are similar, 60 newton each, and you have the angle similar, so cosine the 20, or sine the 20 in this case for the y-axis, and sine the 20 here for the negative y-axis would be the same. Since one of them is positive, one of them is negative, that means ft1y minus ft2y would equal zero. From the chart again, we can see, we can draw the forces. We have F friction going to the negative side of the x-axis. We have Ft1 with 20 degrees from the x-axis. And we have Ft2, which is 20 degrees from the x-axis, but pointing downward in this case. When we analyze the components, we can say that F net x equals Ft1x plus Ft2x plus F friction. The F net X would be in this case, for the FT1 X would be 60 cosine 20, or FT2 X equals 60 cosine 20 as well. 
for the f fraction we know it is 85 in the negative direction if you find the final numbers for each those mathematical expressions the final answer would be the f net would equal 27 point newton with zero degrees angle